Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we will be talking about the principle of mathematical induction. So induction is one of those things where people get quite confused at first because it's one of the first proof techniques that many people learn. And that can often be confusing when people are doing proofs at first time. But you'll see that after hopefully this video and the next video where I talk about several examples using induction, it's actually not as bad as you think it is. So let's get right to it. So I have this analogy with dominoes to kind of indicate what induction is really. So let's go right to it. So induction says that if the first domino falls, so suppose the first domino falls. So this is the first domino. Suppose this domino kind of falls. So we have now established that the first domino falls. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now assume that the key to domino falls. So this is the key to domino. Let me just correct that a little bit. So assume this falls. Okay, so we're now assuming that the key to domino falls. So if the key to domino falls, then the k8 plus first domino, which is this one right there. So this is the k8 plus first domino. That must fall as well. So if the k8 domino falls, then the k8 plus first domino falls as well. So what can we conclude? All the dominoes will fall. And why is that? Well, suppose that k equals 1. That means k equals 2. So the second domino one must fall. Then k plus 1, k equals 3. So the third domino must fall. So add one, the fourth domino must fall. Add one to that, the fifth domino must fall. Sixth one, the seventh one, and so on. So we can now conclude that all the dominoes fall. So this is essentially how induction works. So let's talk about a formal definition of, in formal definition of induction, just because induction uses mathematics, not dominoes. So let's go ahead and talk about induction, the formal definition. So, so, sorry about that, my screen just suddenly zoomed in. Okay. So the principle of mathematical induction. So mathematical induction. Okay, so let's go ahead and underline that. Okay, so how does the principle of mathematical induction work? Okay, so this one just says that suppose I have a statement. So suppose, sorry about that, my screen just keeps jumping. So suppose I have a statement. So suppose I have a statement P of N. Okay. So for some natural number, N. So basically I have some statement P of N for a natural number N. So for example, P of one, P of two, this statement, I'm basically saying I'm, I'm given a statement for some P of one, P of two, P of three, P of N, where N is all the natural numbers. So the, the goal is in the first step, show P of N holds for N equals one. So basically, I'm trying to show that the statement I'm given, so P of N, I'm trying to show that this holds for N equals 1. Okay, so next one. Assume P of N holds for some, I, or I, should, I shouldn't say for some, for all. I'm trying to be very formal with my words here. Assume P of N holds for all N equals K. Okay, so just to kind of, I'm going to stop right there and just define a few things. So this first step is called the base case. 
The next one is called the induction hypothesis. And last step, okay, so assume P of N holds for all N equals K. The last one, show P of N holds for all N equals for all. So this is, this is the symbol for all. <coughs> so for all N equals K plus one. Okay, so this is essentially the definition of mathematical induction and how it works. Sorry, my screen just suddenly jumped there. So this is essentially how induction works. So there's several questions that might pop up in your head right now. Why can you assume that P of N just randomly holds? Well, we kind of do this all the time in mathematics. For example, if this is deep and is true, then this is true. If that is true, this is true. If this is true, then this must be true. So the premise does not is not necessarily something we have to prove is true. This is a conditional statement. So it is with step three and step one that we prove this is true for all n. So as a kind of a reference, let's think back to the other video I did where I talked about conditional statements. And there was an example where I talked about if it rains, then I will take an umbrella. But that's a conditional statement. I never once implied what would happen if it didn't rain. If it doesn't rain, it's my choice whether I take an umbrella or not. The premise might be false, but the conclusion is something I'm using from the premise. The premise, sorry, the premise is not directly proven in induction. So for example, when I use step three along with the base case, that is what establishes mathematical induction. So for example, if I can show that P of N holds for N equals K plus one, then that means that with the assumption that this holds for n equals 1, that means it's true for n equals 2, n equals 3, 4, 5, and so on. So induction basically establishes the statement is true for all n. So as a result, step 2, the induction hypothesis, is never actually directly proven. We only use it as a condition to facilitate the, the using of step three. So just uh, one more thing. The step three is called the induction step. So one second, just to really, just to really clear that up. Step two is never actually directly proven. A lot of people have the assumption that step three, the induction hypothesis, proves the induction step, uh, the induction hypothesis. That's not true. The induction step does not prove the induction hypothesis. The induction step, along with the in a, along with the base case, is what proves this statement for all n. The induction hypothesis is only used as a stepping stone or as a conditional statement to facilitate the use of the induction step. It is never actually directly proven in mathematical induction. So this is the idea of how mathematical induction works. Now, the second question a lot of people have, why is n equal to k? The reason n equals k is because we technically take our, so suppose we have this kind of statement, so this is p of k, and then all of these statements right there, that's n. What are we really doing? is we're taking a smaller subset of this n and we're calling this kind of smaller subset k. And then once again, we use step three along with the base case to prove that k is n. So this kind of establishes the fact that, well, it's true for all n, so n is k. So this is the reason we let n equal k. So once again, just to kind of really make that clear, if I have my list of statements, if this is n, this right there is k, so my smaller kind of subset, that's k. 
So with the induction step and the base case, it's true for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and all the possible natural numbers. So we can now extend our smaller kind of subset to include all the, re all the natural numbers. So as a result, this statement is true for all n. And that's why we kind of start with the assumption n equals k. This isn't strictly necessary. Uh, and in fact, it should probably be written as n is less than k. But nevertheless, most uh, for convention's sake, we usually write n equals k. So let me just make that consistent once again. So technically, we are proving this kind of for a smaller kind of subsection. That's the reason we use n equals k. Strictly speaking, you don't need to do that, but it's more proper terminology. Okay, so with that, I hope induction makes a little bit more sense now as to what mathematical induction is and how you use it to prove something. In the next video, we'll be covering several examples on how to use mathematical, mathematical induction to prove certain statements. And hopefully with that, you will really understand how induction works and how we can use it to prove statements. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the video, uh, in the comments uh, explaining uh, what your question is, and I'll try my best to answer them. Otherwise, if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you all so much.